Let's talk about the pros and cons of living in Corvallis, Oregon. I grew up here, I moved away for college in the first part of my career, and then my family and I decided to move back about six years ago. Having moved back, we've experienced a lot of pros about living here, but also some cons that I wanted to share with you. My name is Otis Kimsey. I'm a real estate agent here in Corvallis, Oregon. I help people buy and sell their houses and find the right place to live for them. Knowing the area very well, I kind of know all the ins and outs of the neighborhoods, the surrounding cities, and a lot about the Willamette Valley that I like to share with my clients when they're looking for the right place for them. So if you're interested in moving to Corvallis, please get in touch with me. Give me a call, send me a text, write me an email, leave a comment down below, any of that, and I'd be happy to help you find the right place to live in Corvallis or the surrounding areas. So with that being said, let's get into it today. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of living here. Pro number one, Corvallis is a small town, but it has a lot to offer given the proximity to Oregon State University and really what that provides for the community as a whole. Really, you can get across town in about 10 to 15 minutes, edge to edge, any which direction. There's no real traffic. The streets are slow and safe. Community is very welcoming. It's been named one of the best biking communities in all of Oregon, really given the number of bike lanes that we have, the multi-use trails that you can use to get around town. And then outside of a few streets around town, there's no streets that have speed limits that are higher than 25 or 30 miles per hour. So it's a great small town. But on the other hand, you get a lot because of the university. There's a lot of great food options here. You have Taco Vino, Magenta, you have Castor, you have American Dream, you have Local Boys, and so many other places that we love to go and eat. So from leaving a big town to, to moving to a smaller city, we've really enjoyed the food options that are available here in Corvallis. And really, I love some of these places just as much or more than anything that we were enjoying in the bigger city. Outside of the food offerings, given the university, you also have a lot of live events. For me, that means sports. I'm a big college sports fan or sports fan in general. You have sports all year round, top level, Pac-12, football and basketball, baseball. The Beavers put out a really great football team. Kind of everybody in the community gets into it. Everybody on Saturdays is wearing their orange, talking about the game, going and tailgating. Vibe of the town really gets overtaken on Saturdays in the fall with everybody supporting Oregon State and making that a big kind of part of the day and, and the community wherever you may go. In the winter, you have basketball, both the men's and the women's team, gymnastics. We've had an Olympian performing here the last few years, which has been really great for getting to see the best gymnast in the world 10 minutes away, regardless of where you are in town, is, is really neat. And then as you move on into the spring and into the summer, Oregon State has the best baseball program over the last 15 years. They've won three national championships and they continue to put out a competitive team that's always looking to go to Omaha, compete for national championships. And that is just a great atmosphere as we move out of the, the winter and into the spring and into the summer. After school's let out, there's also the Corvallis Knights, which put together a great kind of family-friendly, minor league-type baseball atmosphere here in town. So there's live sports and events kind of all year round. If sports isn't what you're into, there's also tons of other events that are brought into town because of the university and the town. So lectures, guest speakers, activities to learn from, and things like that. Outside of educational events and sports, there's also a ton of clubs at Oregon State that put on cultural nights or cultural activities to share with the community as a whole. On top of everything that Oregon State brings in and has to offer for the community, there's also a great kind of beer and wine and cider community around here. Two Town Cider is the biggest cider company in Oregon. I think the Northwest as a whole, but uh, I know Oregon for sure. They're based here. There's some great breweries in town, so whether you're looking for a tap house or a brewery, there's multiple places, some great atmospheres, some great views if you're looking to relax and enjoy a beer and, and hang out. And then just outside of Corvallis, there's multiple wineries as well. We're located in the Willamette Valley. Ten minutes away, you have three wineries that you can get to. 
If you expand that to an hour, you have dozens of wineries that you can get to in the Willamette Valley. So, so many things to offer for a town of 60,000 people. Let's get to pro number two, the location. Corvallis is a town of 60,000 people. It has tons of access to outdoor activities, which is great. But outside of Corvallis also, you're really close to a bunch of things. The coast is an hour away, so it's really easy to get over there if you want to go over to the beach with the family, if you want to go for a walk on the beach, if you want to get some saltwater taffy. It's really great to be one hour door to sand from Corvallis. On top of that, we're about an hour and a half from Portland, an hour and 15 minutes from the edge of it. So if you're looking for live events that don't come to Corvallis, shopping, restaurants, date nights, things like that, you can easily get up to Portland uh, to experience all that a bigger city has to offer. On top of that, if you're into hiking or biking and if you want to get to the Cascades, we're about an hour and 15 minutes from the foothills of the Cascades, about two hours from two ski slopes. They're smaller, but if you want bigger skiing and snowboarding, you can go about two and a half hours to three hours to Mount Hood or to Mount Bachelor. So I have a lot of friends that will get the seasons pass to the smaller local mountains, and then they'll plan a few trips to the bigger mountains for winter break or spring break or extended weekends so that they're getting the regular skiing and snowboarding in but then they also get away to the bigger mountains. For us, being close to Central Oregon has been a huge plus. We used to love to get over to Bend and explore kind of all the outdoor activities that are offered in Bend, but it took us an entire day to get over there, whether it was a flight or driving from where we were living, it took so long to get to Bend. Now we're about two hours and 45 minutes away from Bend and from Central Oregon, which is just great because now you can turn it into a weekend over in Central Oregon, rather than spending one day traveling, another day traveling back, and really only having a little while to enjoy Central Oregon. So if you're looking for the drier air, or if you're looking for the snow, if you're looking for fly fishing or golfing or anything that Ben has to offer, it's really nice to be in Corvallis and be close to everything else, but be able to get over to Central Oregon very easily. On top of that, we have the Eugene Airport about 50 minutes away. The security line there is very short, so it's very easy to get onto a flight in Eugene. Close parking, cheap parking, short security line, and then you can fly away to Southern California, to Arizona, to Texas, to Seattle, a few other direct flights from there. But you can get away very easily from Corvallis or if you're looking to travel for work. PDX is about an hour and 30 minutes away if you're looking for international travel or a hub that has more connecting flights. That's probably where you'd be looking to go. When I lived in the bigger city, you were looking at an hour just to get outside of the city sometimes, depending on when the traffic hit. Now you're an hour to the coast, hour and 30 to Portland, and so many other options just outside of the city. Pro number three, the active lifestyle and the outdoor community here. There's so much to offer in the woods and in the forest just outside of Corvallis, whether it's the McDonald Forest, Bald Hill, Fit and Green, there's a lot of different places that you can go to access those trails. Something I got into when I first moved here was trail running. There's countless miles of trails that I can get to at half a mile outside of my front door. I can get into the Mac Forest and kind of explore all around the McDonald Forest with trails and logging roads. So if you're into trail running or hiking, gravel biking, dirt biking, on top of the trails, there's so much more. There's a good running community here, road biking, triathlete, golfing, tennis, a phenomenal club that you can actually get into. I know a lot of the bigger cities have tennis clubs that have 10 year waiting lists and astronomical joining fees. Timber Hill Tennis Club is a great tennis club, a lot to offer, six covered courts, two outdoor courts. Being actually able to join a tennis club has been big for our family as we enjoy tennis and uh, just love that because it wasn't even an option when we were in the bigger city. Pickleball is big in Corvallis. There's multiple places that host pickleball year round indoors. There's also a bunch of outdoor courts. A lot of them are freshly built, so the surfaces are phenomenal and they bring out a ton of people, especially when it's sunny out, good weather. You'll see a lot of those outdoor pickleball courts just packed with people. On the golf front, we have two 18-hole courses here in Corvallis, Tristing Tree and the Corvallis Club. And then we also have a fun little par three 
Golf City, very casual. So if you're a new golfer or casual golfer or just looking to go out and have a good time, Golf City is a really fun, accessible, easy to get to, easy to experience golf facility. You can borrow clubs there, buy a few balls, and you're good to go for, uh, for nine holes of par three golf. On top of that, we have multiple CrossFit gyms, CrossFit style gyms, yoga. I, there's goat yoga, there's beer yoga, there's laughter yoga, there's hot yoga, there's power yoga. There's so many things to offer there. We have a great climbing gym in town. So if you're looking for something more competitive and, and harder, they have you covered. But also if you're just looking to explore rock climbing and, and wanting to check it out, they have uh, different routes that are available for kids up to adults regardless of what your ability is. We have the Willamette River here, so there's tons of water options as well. So whether you're canoeing or kayaking or stand-up paddle boarding or just taking a, a floaty out and uh, inner tubing down the Willamette, when it gets hot, a lot of people love to get into the Willamette, float down from Crystal Lakes, down to Michael's Landing downtown. So a lot of different outdoor activities and a very active lifestyle here, here in Corvallis allows you to, to find your group of people, get outside, keep moving, be active, whether it's on the trails or anywhere else around the city, there's a lot of options here in Corvallis. Pro number four, family activities are abundant. We moved back here when our daughter was two, she's now eight, and there are just so many things offered in Corvallis for families, regardless of what you're looking into. Sports are big here. One of my favorite activities is AYSO soccer, which is the, the more recreational soccer for kids anywhere from under five up to about 13. I think they have a few groups above 13 as well. But in the fall, in the spring, it feels like half of Corvallis kind of goes to Adams where they have all the soccer fields and you'll run into everybody uh, from across town, from all the different parents that are out there supporting their kids, grandparents, friends. So that's a lot of fun. Baseball, softball, ultimate frisbee. If you're looking for gymnastics, if you're looking for theater, if you're looking for dance, uh, Corvallis also has a lot of offerings there. There's multiple dance studios downtown. The Majestic Theater puts on performances all throughout the year, as well as the, the high schools and Oregon State. So there's theater offerings as well. Outside of that, camps, educational camps, STEM camps, art camps, so many things offered throughout the community, both through Oregon State, through the Art Center, through Boys and Girls Club, through Parks and Rec. I'm sure I'm missing a few there as well, but there are camps galore here in Corvallis, both in the summer and throughout the school year. One thing that I found really nice is that the camps, while they can sell out and they can fill up, you don't have to be online at 6 a.m. in the morning, constantly hitting refresh to try to get a spot for your kid in these camps. Living in the big city, it was so stressful trying to get a spot in a camp. Which ones could you get into? Which ones sold out in the first minute or three minutes before you were able to sign up for one and find the next one? So in Corvallis, a lot of room for people to get their kids signed up, for them to explore different offerings. So many kids and family activities here in Corvallis. Pro number five. The importance of education in schools here in town. Uh, obviously, given that we have Oregon State here, a lot of people attend Oregon State, went to Oregon State, work at Oregon State. Education is very important here in Corvallis, and it shows through the educational offerings, uh, seminars, speakers, uh, everything put on by Oregon State, but also in the public schools and how the schools are supported. Just in the last few years, we've had two brand new elementary schools built. We've also had many major renovations done to the other elementary schools to get them up to speed from a technology standpoint, from a safety standpoint, to get them more modern technology and really more modern layouts for how schools are organized and operate these days. And that's being done by the taxpayers here in Corvallis. So definitely check out uh, Corvallis school ratings online, see how they compare to other schools in Oregon or other states. We were very pleased with what we found online. And I, we know a lot of people are very happy with how Corvallis supports education and the schools here in town. 
On top of the schools, there's also a great public library. It's free. You can get in there. They have a phenomenal kids and, and young adults section. They have a great section for adults that are looking to explore and learn more as well. One of my favorite things that they offer is a makerspace. So whether you're looking to do some 3D cutting using a low forge, or if you're looking to do some cry cut, there's all different things offered in the makerspace that you can explore, which is a great offering that, that the Corvallis Public Library has. So those are a few of the pros that really come to mind. I'm sure there's more, we love it here, but I wanna share some of the cons about moving here as well. Want to be completely transparent. This has been our experience from moving back here as well as my experience growing up here. So here's some of the cons. Con number one, the weather. It's gray. I uh, can't really lie about it. So from mid-October until probably March, well, probably more like April, you're looking at some pretty gray skies. Outside of just kind of planning around the rain, a lot of people get used to it. So running in the rain, I like to get out to the trails and trail run when it's raining. If you get under the trees, you're under a canopy and it's just drizzling in there. What a lot of people also like to do is plan trips. So again, with the Eugene Airport being about an hour away, you can easily get down to Eugene, easy access, easy parking, easy security lines, and get direct flights down to Phoenix, down to San Diego, down to LA down to SNA, which is about 15 minutes from Disneyland. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of plan around the gray skies, give yourself a break and uh, get out of town pretty easily. One thing that all this rain does provide though is all the greenery that we have around here. So the spring, the summer is absolutely phenomenal here in Corvallis. The summer is actually a special time here in Corvallis because the weather outside is great. A lot of the Oregon State University students have left for the summer, so you can easily get into restaurants. The town takes a breath and everything slows down a little bit and it's just a great summer vibe. Con number two, the nightlife. Uh, if you want to go out clubbing, if you enjoy late nights, uh, Corvallis is probably not the best place to live that lifestyle. Things start to shut down around 9 p.m., 10 p.m., outside of a few establishments, and people start heading home. There's a few bars that stay open late at night. There's two dance clubs, depending on uh, what night of the week it is or, or what season of the year it is. I would say that a lot of people love going out for happy hour, love grabbing a drink outside when it's sunny, when the weather's great, but a lot of people will go out to dinner and then head home after that. So the nightlife here is pretty non-existent. Con number three, affordability. Corvallis has historically had a pretty limited supply of housing, and so that's really impacted the affordability of buying and renting here. Moving from a bigger city, it was cheaper, but you compare Corvallis to other cities around Oregon or around the nation that are about this size, it's a fairly high cost of living from a, from a housing standpoint. One thing, the lack of inventory in housing did help with was during the 08, 09 crash was that housing prices were a little insulated here just because of the limited supply. Housing prices dropped a couple percent each of those years, but it didn't totally crash like we saw in a lot of markets around the US. Obviously that doesn't help with buying houses or, or finding a rental to move into, uh, but it is something good to know about historically what that lack of inventory has led to in a town like Corvallis. I found that there's a lot of things that you can do once you're living here that aren't that expensive. There's a free bus system, so kind of wherever you wanna go around the city, you can hop on a bus and, and it's entirely free. A bunch of the activities that people get up to here are free, so from the hiking, the biking, the running, a lot of free activities that people spend their time doing. From grocery shopping, I love shopping at Winco. You do a lot of the work yourself, but the prices are phenomenal. We also have multiple Safeways, and then we also have Market of Choice or the Co-op. If you're looking for more organic offerings or higher end offerings, so from a grocery shopping standpoint, there's ways to save money and help with the affordability as well. You can find great places to, to do things affordably here in Corvallis, whether it's food, restaurants, or free activities. By getting into housing here from both a rental and a buying standpoint is on the more high-end side of things. Con number four, 
no major nationwide tour events come through Corvallis. So if you're looking for professional sports, you're looking to go up to Portland for the Blazers or the Timbers or the Thorns. If you want to catch an NFL game, head up to Seattle. You can easily hop on the train and be delivered right up to outside of where the Seahawks play, or it's a couple hour drive on I-5 as well. If you're looking for nationwide touring musical acts, theater events, uh, comedians, anything along those lines, you're probably looking at going up to Portland. One thing my wife and I did when we moved to Corvallis was say, we're going to budget a few nights away so that when those big shows come to town, we can just go up to Portland, get a hotel room, and plan on a night or weekend away. Obviously, it's not as easy to get to as when we lived in the bigger city, but now that we're here, it's very easy to plan a night away, get up to Portland, go to a show, grab some great dinner, and uh, make the most out of out of going up to Portland to see musical acts, theater, comedians, etc. Outside of touring events that go to Portland, sometimes you'll also get events that go to Eugene or over to Bend. In the summer, there's a ton of outdoor venues around Oregon. So down in Eugene, you get a bunch of big name acts that like to tour outdoors. For amphitheaters, a lot of people go over to Bend. A lot of people go to McMinimins outside of Portland. If you're a country music fan, the Oregon Jamboree is a great festival. It's only about an hour away. So there's a lot of outdoor music festivals and outdoor music offered in the summer, uh, kind of wherever you want to get to. And that's something that's great in Oregon. Great weather in the summer, easy to get to outdoor music venues but they don't come through Corvallis. So definitely plan on finding those shows that you want to go to, planning a night away, a weekend away, and making it happen. So those are the pros and cons that I've experienced, both from growing up here and then moving back. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. What did I miss, uh, both on the pros and on the cons side of things? Definitely let me know in the comments below. If there's enough of comments and feedback, I will make another video like this and go into depth. Again, if you're looking to move to Corvallis or have questions about the right city or neighborhood for you based on the activities that you're into, definitely get in touch with me. Send me a text, give me a call, send me an email, leave a comment below, and uh, I would love to help answer your questions about Corvallis, the communities, the surrounding areas, and if you're looking for a house, the right house for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care.